Hi, my name is Dennis Smith. I'm 46 years old. I live in Adelaide, South Australia. I've been here for about 10 years. I was born in New Zealand. Uh, I have a gorgeous 19-year-old daughter, Brittany. She lives in New Zealand. She's an artist and a bloody fine human being. I'm married to Kairi Colhagen. We've been together for about 11 years. Light painting came to me as a part of a, a, a healing time in my life about 10 years ago when I was recovering from some pretty serious mental health issues, uh, going through a massive light change. So light painting to me uh, is about healing. Um, it's also about uh, sharing. Uh, a massive part of my light painting journey has been about sharing the love I have of light painting with other people, teaching light painting, trying to teach people online, but most importantly, teaching people physically. So light painting is more than just the art for me. It's about connecting with other human beings, sharing. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, uh, light painting for me is about excitement. Uh, not only the excitement of seeing what we create, um, but things like this. We were here last night light painting. It's an incredibly exciting, vibrant place to be. It's beautiful, uh, but it's exciting. And so light painting for me is about excitement, it's about sharing, and it's a massive part of uh, healing for me. My journey into light painting uh, is a pretty complex one, so I'll try and keep it short. In um, about 2008, I went through quite a serious um, uh, situation where I had a uh, quite a horrific mental and nervous breakdown when I was in New Zealand that came off the back of some pretty serious issues around work, uh, alcohol abuse, uh, and pretty much just not looking after myself very well. Um, so I had a bit of a collapse. Uh, my gorgeous wife Kyrie scooped me up uh, and, and helped me to, to sort of get my life back together. And part of that was leaving New Zealand and selling everything we had and moving to Australia. When we arrived in Australia, we moved to the most beautiful part of South Australia called the Barossa Valley. Absolutely stunning. And I had, uh, I had just purchased a new camera. And what I was doing is I was using photography as a way to get out and get away from and sort of escape a bit from life, I suppose. So I was getting out into the landscape um, and starting to take photos. And it was such a thrill. Uh, you know, I was um, 35 years old. I'd never owned a camera before. And I thought that I thought I was Ansel Adams. I was creating the most gorgeous images of the South Australian landscape and I decided I wanted to share those photos and back then really the only way to do that there was no social media so it was Flickr so I was going on to Flickr and I was putting these images on Flickr that I thought were uh, the greatest photographs ever taken of the Brossa Valley uh, but I realized that uh, they were really quite ordinary and that there were a lot of photographers in the Brossa Valley that were pretty amazing but while I was hanging around Flickr I discovered this thing called light painting uh, and, and in particular the light junkies group on there. If, if you've never been to light junkies you need to go and spend some time there and go back to 2009 and check out the madness that was there. But what happened is for the first time in, in, my, uh, in, in my life I really discovered a community that I bonded with. Light painting really delivered to me a community, a, a group of people who, even though they were on the other side of the world, via Flickr and via the internet, um, I discovered uh, this thing called light painting and got into it pretty, pretty aggressively because uh, I was spending a lot of time uh, on my own. But what it gave me was this opportunity to go out into the landscape and, uh, and, and again, heal, spend time on my own, discover nature. Uh, at the age of 35, I'd spent very little time around nature and South Australia was a place that was just incredible for discovering the landscape, um, a bit about nature, and, and most importantly, a whole lot about myself. So that's how I got into light painting and really uh, it, it just went absolutely berserk from there. Um, the community was pretty small, it was very tight. Uh, it was, um, I think, you know, if I think back to those days in 2008 and 2009 and, and, and for times leading up to those, man, there was, it was just screaming ahead. Everyone was experimenting uh, and sharing and growing so fast and there was always new and exciting things happening. 
um, it was amazing. Uh, and, and I also got the opportunity to spend time with um, uh, a lot of really incredible artists and, and inspiration was just totally, totally flowing. So that was just magical. So I think a lot of people, when they look at me and they look at my work, what they see is light painting. Uh, it's probably the thing I'm most prolific at uh, in, in the, the online community, but, it's, uh, but I also have a, a video and photography production business with a, my great business partner, Sam Collins, and we, uh, we produce corporate video, we produce uh, video for the uh, educational industries uh, and the medical industries, but I'm also a commercial photographer as well. Um, my the things I love in commercial photography are uh, portraiture, uh, environmental portraits, but interacting with humans is my favorite type of photography. So yeah, it's, a, it's an absolutely magical, magical part of my life, but it's a part of my life that a lot of people don't um, know exists really. So pretty early on in my light painting uh, journey, I decided that I wanted to have a crack at sharing my light painting with other people. And through Facebook, I organized, um, uh, I thought I wanted to share what light painting was with all these other people. And I put on Facebook that we were gonna do this meetup and we were expecting, uh, you know, a few people. So we set up and I was so, so, so super nervous. There was going to be uh, maybe 20, 30 people. And what happened is I think we counted 80 cameras in the room, but it was such a wonderful experience and seeing the thrill and the joy of other people uh, experiencing light painting uh, kind of became a bit addictive. And the response that I got from that interaction with people was overwhelming. And so pretty quickly, uh, yeah, the workshops took off and, uh, and I've never really looked back. It's become quite a big thing. So one of the things that I realized pretty quick is that um, the workshops just got bigger and bigger and we were doing these events where there were 20 or 30 and sometimes 40 people and really what had to happen is I wanted uh, I wanted the experience to just be incredible for people. So what happened is I, I met this amazing guy, Ben Woods, who um, was really fresh to light painting but just had this amazing energy about him uh, and so he started to come along to the workshops and it was awesome what it meant is that we could split people off into groups and Ben would be able to look after a group and I would be able to look after a group and it was amazing and we would swap around which was brilliant and so since the, that time uh, now that the workshops have just been getting bigger and bigger and not just bigger and bigger but a lot more uh, intense is uh, yeah I do have quite a big team um, you know uh, a really good mate of mine Aaron Martin has come on board recently with the light painting world alliance tour uh, we had Rob Turney and Alex Kessler I trust them implicitly they do such a wonderful job and what it means is that the experience for people that come to the events is so much better Okay, I'd like to think that I have this amazing creative process where I design these shots and we end up with these beautiful uh, images. But look, in reality, fundamentally, especially when I'm out in, in nature, what I do is I'll come to a place like this. I was here about six months ago and I'll look and imagine, and I'll imagine what a shot will look like under the moon. Um, and then we come back to it. Uh, so, uh, you know, the concept is always just to create great big grand images and stuff, but really where it comes down to is still thinking about it being a really good landscape image. Um, and so, yeah, there's planning in that. You can't just roll up somewhere at night and, and create an image. Obviously, you're in the studio or whatever, it can be different, but, so I've come up here and we've thought about this, and then the other night uh, we came up and I'd already thought about where it was. I knew what the weather was gonna be like. I knew where the moon was gonna be. So there is planning in that respect, um, but mainly it's just about scoping locations, uh, deciding whether I want a grand landscape or I'm gonna be in a ruin. Um, but no, nah, to be honest, most of the time I'm just winging it, which is, I reckon, is one of the most exciting parts of an image. Sometimes it means you go home with nothing, uh, but invariably with good planning, it means that the images are amazing. It's a bit of a no-brainer that, you know, we see stuff on social media that is uh, inspiring. But when I think of inspiration, and I think, I always encourage people to do this. If you're a beginner to light painting, being inspired to light paint is automatic. You just look at other light painters and you see what they're doing and you get ideas. But 
Um, and I still do go online and watch what other light painters are doing. But in reality, what I'm, what I'm thinking about is I want to be pushing the boundaries. And my genre I think of in light painting is, you know, obviously the ball of light, but I'm fundamentally a landscape photographer. I try and put the ball of light and my light painting into the landscape. So a massive part of my inspiration is landscape photographers. I'm looking at landscape photographers I love. I'm looking at their composition, where they are, how they lay their images out. And then I'm trying to put my light painting into those images because fundamentally what I'm doing is uh, I am trying to create an, an image that if you took the light painting out of it, it would still be a compelling image to the eye. But here's the big one for me, is I am always looking at other art forms. My favorite website that I go to is, uh, this is Colossal, or Colossal? Anyway, Colossal it is an amazing website that really covers all genres of art. There's photography in there, there's, uh, digital, there's digital art, there's sculpture, painting, everything you can imagine, but it's always boundary pushing. And I know there's a lot of different sites where you can go to get that sort of inspiration, but for me, it's places like that. Um, I want to see what people, I want to see boundaries that people are pushing in, in landscape photography, uh, water-based stuff. I mean, I'm in the water all the time, so I'm looking for, for different um, things around that. But yeah, other artists, you know, great art is great art. Um, uh, I spent a lot of time when I first started my photography studying Annie Leibovitz uh, and I realize now looking back what it is that I'm inspired by uh, Annie is not not her for photographs they are beautiful uh, photographs but it's her uh, the way she runs her business it's her attitude around photography it's the way she interacts with her clients all of that sort of thing so uh, yeah cross genre is where I go I spent a lot of time in the the Adelaide Art Gallery it's a great place um, but inspiration can come from all places, um, but yeah, there's a lot of it, a lot of it around, um, but it's got to come from in here really. So three of, three of my favourite artists, this is probably one of the hardest questions that I've had to think about with this one. You know, and always when I think about light painting, the very first person that comes to mind uh, is T-Dub. Trevor Williams in Japan, he's, he's a, a guy who in, in the early days and right up till now when I see his stuff pop up it's such a treat you know but Trevor is a guy who uh, really was one of the first guys to push the light painting uh, community you know uh, he, he, he built uh, light junkies on Flickr his work was stunning uh, you know his orbs were where I you know I, I used to look at Trevor's orbs and it was that's how I learned to do orbs was being inspired by him and I still to this day, you know, I look at, I go back and look at Trevor's stuff. He's a great photographer. There's a guy uh, I've always been a massive fan on as well, who's outside of our genre, and his name's Warren Keelan. You know, Warren is a guy I've I've met. He's here in Australia, but he creates, uh, he just creates gorgeous artwork in the water. And I, I go there and I look and I see his stuff. He inspires me, uh, and it's not just inspires me to create my own light painting images. But he inspires me to be a photographer, which I think is a big part of it. So another guy who I've been spending a lot of time looking at recently who's inspired me is Florian Krauss. He, I don't know how this guy hasn't got like a gazillion followers on social media, but absolutely stunning. Just this gentle, delicate light painting. And what I do is I look at his light painting work and, uh, and, and um, what I, what I try and do is I think, well, I don't want to go out and copy this guy, but I would love to bring some of his elements of work into mine. Um, so Florian has been a wonderful influence on me recently. So there's three. Okay, my own favorite artwork. This is always a tricky thing. How do you decide what your own favorite artwork is? And all my, I've got a whole lot of current stuff that I absolutely love, but easily my favorite light painting images is distantly related. It's a photograph I created in my first six months of light painting. It was made with a shitty little Canon 450D camera with a plastic lens under a jetty here in South Australia. And the reason I love it is because fundamentally it's quite a crappy image. You know, the, the, the ball of light is a bit wonky. Uh, there's all sorts of noise in the image and there's vignetting, you know, I don't know. It's like there's other lights around. There's nothing really special about it. But, but what I love about it is that I still post that image now sometimes and people just go nuts on it. And I don't even need to tell them that it's made with a dodgy little camera and a dodgy lens and it was, you know, no one looks at the noise, no one sees noise. Um, yeah, so that's my favorite, just because it, it, it gets me right here. And it was the beginning. It was my first real killer light painting image that I loved. 
Well, I'm very lucky. I, I, um, I've light painted in some pretty amazing places, you know, the, the, the Alps in Europe, um, uh, and, you know, through Germany, Angkor Wat in Cambodia. I've just come back from Easter Island. You know, these are all absolutely mind-bending locations. Um, but there's two, at least three really places that, that I fantasize about. One is going back home to New Zealand. I've never really done any light painting at home. The bottom of the South Island of New Zealand in winter really is my dream light painting location. I always think, I also think about abandoned cities. There's a, there's a fishing village in Japan that is an abandoned fishing village and it's covered in green. I see that photo often. I'd love to go there. Um, and the tip of a pyramid in Egypt. Let's throw that one in there. Climb up there, do a bit of a ball of light on the top of a pyramid. So a few years ago I went to uh, Cambodia and there's a temple there called Angkor Wat which is the largest temple in the world and I really wanted to get in there and light paint and um, I uh, realized pretty quick that they, the gates shut at night and you just can't go near the place. So long story short, there was a very dodgy deal done in a car park with a policeman and a temple guard. There was some funds that changed hands. I'm sure it went to charity. Uh, and I got to meet those guys around the back of the temple and uh, they let me in. So we went into the Angkor Wat temple on the night of a full moon. It was cloudy. Um, and the deal was they were going to stay with me all night after about... 20 minutes uh, they got bored shitless and they just said to me you go do your light painting just make sure you're out at five in the morning and there are some stories i have from that place that are hilarious for another time but um yeah angkor what it was spiritual it was terrifying it was um huge i hadn't been in there the day before it was the first time in there was in the dark absolutely unforgettable experience closely followed by the moai on easter island of course but amazing night amazing experience like all things in life but for me with light painting it's a double-edged sword i'll start with the trickiest part of light painting for me and that's creating a separation between the business part of my light painting and the art, you know, the things that were the core of why I got into light painting. You know, I started light painting for fun, for, 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 for health, um, for a whole lot of really beautiful reasons. And I still do, you know, I've been away for two nights with, uh, you know, with Ben Woods and Rob Turney on, the, you know, just a gorgeous couple of nights here light painting. Um, you know, and it's these are the moments that I absolutely live for is this stuff. Um, but then I, you know, then I go home and tomorrow we've got three days in the workshop making light painting tools. And so creating that separation between the fun and the business is really complex. Um, but you know, the thing I love about light painting the most, I really love the joy that my light painting brings to other people, whether it's online or at workshops. That's the great fun part of it for sure. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel like my entire bloody life is a creative block. What I do when I have a creative block is I go back to basics. I'll go down the beach or come out somewhere and I will just spin a ball of light in a landscape on a beach, super simple. And what happens nine times out of 10 is that beautiful, joyous feeling that you get from creating light painting comes back in an instant. Um, and then I sort of progress from there. But, you know, creative blocks, you just got to embrace them. I think, I think any artist will tell you that. Do I set goals? I know what my dream life looks like. I know what, you know, and I'm talking big picture. I know what my dream life looks like. For me right now, it's about, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, financial freedom, uh, a little bit of time and space to create more art. Um, you know, I want to uh, teach more light painting. I want to travel around the world doing more light painting. I want, um, I want to spend more time with my daughter and my wife. I have goals around personal stuff. But yeah, I, I heavily goal set around, um, specifically uh, when I think about my art, because that's what we're talking about, is locations. Um, I desperately want to get up to the UK, um, and so I'm setting some pretty heavy goals around that. Structuring how I'm going to get there, um, but 
I get in a whole lot of trouble for doing this is uh, I set the I set the end result first. I want to go to the UK and then I figure out how to do it. I want to go to Morocco in September for the meetup with um, Cisco and, and, and everyone, all the amazing artists up there. So what I do is I just say, well, I'm going to Morocco. So now what I've got to do is spend out, spend five months figuring out how to do it. But. Oh my God, the Light Painting World Alliance tour. That was gigantic. The Light Painting World Alliance is a big organization and Sergey is doing some amazing stuff all over the planet. And uh, I've been a member of the Light Painting World Alliance for a long time. Uh, and I got a, a message from Rob Turney and Rob said to me, hey, look, I'm thinking about doing a tour as part, you know, thinking about doing a Light Painting World Alliance tour. How would you like to be a part of it? And at the time I was so incredibly super busy, but I was like, you know, there's no way there's going to be an event in this country that I'm not a part of and putting it, putting a hand into. And so uh, Rob and myself, uh, you know, we put together a, a group of people, uh, Alex Kessler, um, you know, Ben Woods, you know, the four of us put this thing together with, along with Sergey from afar. Um, you know, Sergey's on the other side of the world. Uh, and, and so, you know, there's some challenge, there were some challenges around that, you know, managing things and getting it up and running. But we pretty quickly decided we wanted it to be a three city tour across Australia. And I don't know if many of you know, um, put Europe on top of uh, Australia and the, the map is skew if Australia is massive. So we had the logistics of that. We were lucky enough to bring uh, um, Patrick Rochon came down. Uh, we had Palateth came down. Uh, Monica came down. So we had a bunch of people come down from the Northern Hemisphere, which was such a buzz. Um, but yeah, anyway, the tour was gigantic. We, we, uh, we exposed light painting to hundreds of people. We had some amazing workshops that we did uh, to, to uh, help make the, the whole tour a reality. But basically it was two weeks of utter madness. So much fun, so many late nights, great interaction with other people. The Australian crew stepped up and we created magic. It was incredible. And um, I'm so proud of what we did, uh, what we pulled off. It was, it was just an epic undertaking. And I don't think there was anyone that was involved with the tour who came on it that didn't think that it was uh, a, a complete thrill. Um, it was magic. Well, you know, there are some things we can't talk about, but there are a few projects on the go. Look, I've got, um, uh, what, are we, what have we got coming up? Uh, big stuff. I and mean, we've got a whole swathe of workshops coming up. Um, I've got a, a suite of tutorial videos that we're doing. We've got a couple of amazing new light painting tools uh, in, 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 the, um, in, in the, the development stages. Um, but really for me, between now and the end of the year, it's about uh, getting away. I've got, a, uh, I've got a trip to the UK sort of planned. I want to get up there and do a bit of a tour through the UK, meet a whole lot of amazing light painters that, that I love and respect, uh, potentially across to the US. I'd love to do that. Uh, but yeah, Europe is a big goal of mine at the moment. Um, and uh, probably the biggest project that I have on the go, and I'll give you a little bit of a sneak preview, is I want to create a documentary about light painting. It's such, a, it's such an amazing light form. Uh, sorry, it's such an amazing art form and there's so many wonderful stories stories of light painters stories of connection stories of the growth of our art form um, you know and there's uh, uh, nothing there's no great documentary without a little bit of controversy and we all know that that exists in light painting so we'll, <laughs> we'll probably be shooting a bit of that but um, yeah those are really you know it's all about travel workshops teaching uh, and uh, and the doco Th those are the big projects I've got on the go at the moment uh, and I'm looking forward to every single one of them You know, one of the absolutely incredible things about social media and Facebook and the internet is just this amazing ability we have to share information. Oh my God, there's such a swathe of tutorials, uh, websites for inspiration, places you can go and see just any type of light painting, any type of light painting tool. It is absolutely incredible. And, you know, as light painters, by the nature, we are super, super, super sharing. You know, I get, you know, I get constant messages from people daily asking me questions about how I create what I create, what I do, what inspires me, how, you know, send me a picture of an image and say, oh my gosh, I need to know a thing about this. You know, I'm on that. 
straight away. I love hearing from people asking me questions about their work. The vast majority of our community are like that, giving, sharing, helping. We just want as many people as possible to get out and wave a bloody tool in front of a camera. And I think we're one of the most sharing, uh, um, I think we're probably one of the most sharing forms of photography. So when I think about the future of light painting, I think, um, you know, and I try and encourage as many, as many light painters as I can to reach out to their photography communities. Every year uh, I go and deliver uh, presentations uh, at uh, camera clubs and schools and it's like, I want to think it's like a virus, you know. Camera clubs are older people and schools are younger people. Um, and I think, uh, I think light painting um, will become like a virus, you know. Uh, I encourage people to go and do those things. And, you know, you can't help but be in awe when you're a photographer and you do that for the first time. You wave a tool around in front of a, a camera and just that sense of awe that you get. And um, so, yeah, I think I, if that's what the question is, you know, I think that's what I think that's the future of light painting is just it spreading amongst the photography community. You know, if you're someone watching this who's really new to light painting, here's a couple of things that, that I'd really love you to think about. You probably go around and you look at other light painters online. So you might look at Patrick Rochon doing blading. You might look at me doing orbs. Uh, you might look at Mark Barris doing um, camera rotations or Cisco doing his calligraphy, right? So you see all these different genres of light painting. And a great way to get started is, yeah, you want to look at what they're doing. So you might look at one of my images and you'll see it on the beach or something with a reflection or here on the, on a, on a, uh, you know, in a landscape environment. And you might take an orb and you might look at what I create and you might try and replicate it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I think some people, some people poo poo that, but when you go to art school, you paint cubism, you know, you do sculpture or, you know, you look at the, the masters and you try and replicate their art. And so you're going to do that with your light painting and, and you should. It's a great way to get to get good, to, to see what people are doing with their rotations or their landscapes. Right. But my advice to you as a newbie is don't be disappointed when it doesn't look the same. I remember when I first started spinning orbs, you know, there were not a lot of people doing it, but there were, there were a good solid dozen people spinning orbs. And I would look at theirs and I thought they were incredibly round and mine was shit. They were like, oh my God, they were like, some of them were like pumpkins and spaghettis of light more than balls of light. And, um, you know, and, and I just persevered and, and I, I spun and I spun and I spun almost till my fingers bled. You know, I was up here, the, I was up here just uh, two nights ago spinning absolute crap. I don't know what was going on. I just couldn't spin a perfectly bound orb to save myself, right? But you don't see those ones. What you see is the image I'm going to show you that, that, that is, what is what I really enjoyed, right? But there's so many uh, images before that that were absolute rubbish, but you are never going to see those. So when you're out light painting, remember that for every 10, one is going to be good and nine are going to be shit. You know, there's a classic cartoon that I've, that I've seen and I think about it all the time of a guy juggling plates on a stage and you see the, the shot is from behind and you can see the crowd and he's juggling plates, but behind him down the stairs are all these smashed plates. Um, you know, and it reminds me all the time that, um, when I see stuff that looks beautiful, I'm only seeing the tip of the iceberg. So that's one piece of advice. And bloody do more. <laughs> Don't, after a week of spinning orbs, send me a message and go, oh, I can't figure out why my orbs aren't very good. And I ask, oh, well, how many have you spun? 10. Go spin another 100. And my last piece of advice for you as a newbie is this. The vast majority of my light painting uh, these days are done on pretty basic cameras. You know, uh, they're not full frame cameras. You know, I shoot with Olympus um, and, and you know, people, they're not considered as being a really high end uh, camera. They're micro four third cameras, but man, I'm producing some of the best light painting I've ever done on these cameras. So what I want to say to you, if you're a beginner to light painting, don't ever think that you need a giant expensive camera to make gold. I'm going to pop up a couple of images now that I made on a tiny little Olympus EM10, which is their base model camera. And you can insert 
any you know Sony, Canon, Nikon, whatever your basic camera, um, a great image has nothing to do with the camera. If you're a budding light painter, never ever ever worry about camera. Uh, get out and make some bloody gold with it. Um, you know, light painting and photography and, and art and life is about internal joy and internal happiness. Don't let douchebags on on Facebook and Instagram uh, make you feel bad about your work. Um, go and create your own magic and, and forget about those people. Um, but most importantly, look, my advice to you is this, is have fun. Have fun. Don't stress about your work. Don't panic about it being perfect. Don't worry about what other people think. Go out, have fun, and share it with someone else. If you're an adult, grab a kid. My challenge to you is grab someone under 10, get them light painting. It'll freak them out. Have fun. That's it. You know, my advice, to not just to newbies, to all light painters, is make it fun. And thank you, Light Painting Blog, you are doing magic. Uh, you're creating something that is just such a joy, you know, truly sharing, truly inspiring, and you all work so hard. And I feel incredibly honored to be, um, to have been asked to, to share uh, with the community. Uh, it's all I want to do. And uh, thank you all, you are all amazing, Light Painters. Peace.